Welcome back to Carbon Stone Podcast, where our positive news articles come to life. I'm your host, Naisha Stone, and I'm also the founder of Carbon Stone, your weekly source of positive news. If you're a new listener, um, we've been doing the podcast since de- December. I bring a different person from around the world on to talk about their positive news. Um, this is an extension of the Carbon Stone brand. We started off with articles, you know, video interviews, we have a radio segment, and now we have the podcast, and we also offer marketing services. So let's get right into it. As I was just telling our next guest, um, I freaking love ice cream, so I'm very, very excited. Excited um, to have her on. We have Chef Liz Rogers of Cream Alicious, which is the number one African American woman owned ice cream brand. Um, they started two years ago, and so I'm excited to have them on. They're located in Kroger, Target, Walmart. Um, and recently, I was just reading that the Cream Alicious coffee creamers, which launched in January, just recently sold out in over three, 1,300 locations. So, congratulations to you. How are you doing today, Chef? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Ms. Stone. Oh, no problem. Uh, so let's 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 dive right into it. Um, so like I said, I'm a fanatic of ice cream. So um, why specifically go into the field of ice cream? Like you, you, we don't hear a lot about a lot of people going to making ice cream. A lot of black people. So I'm very interested to hear uh, your story. I'm super excited because um, ice cream is the world's number one dessert. So I actually, Cream Alicious started um, in my restaurants as a pastry line. So we thought it would be really cool to turn those pastries into pints of ice cream. And so we take four generations of family-owned recipes. Uh, we bake them in their entirety and they're intertwined in a French uh, pint of ice cream. So it's kind of like a two-in-one dessert. It's the only two-in-one dessert on the market. And it's very innovative, very Southern-inspired um, it, it comes with an amazing grand stories of, of the South, uh, just family, just a lot of generational, just, just love, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it, it's like one of the most amazing things that you can eat because we all like ice cream, right. Or some kind of, you know, form of ice cream. And it's, it's just great memories and just great times. And I really saw that there was really a need for minority presence in that category. What were kind of some of the first steps you took to um to going off and creating the ice ice cream brand? Because like I said, stated earlier, you're in Kroger, Target, Walmart. So how do you get to the point from okay, these are pastries, so now I want to fill this gap in the ice cream industry, and now you're you got these big partnerships you're selling out. So like, you walk us kind of through that process. Uh, uh, absolutely, I'm I'm a restaurant tour and executive chef by trade. Um, so one of the things is just really creating the actual recipes, you know, doing it in your, in your kitchen, uh, commercial kitchen or at home is totally different than mass producing. So just really enlisting, um, a really great group of food scientists, nutritionalists, and, and people that are actually able to scale your recipe up and there's formulas, you know, and the one big thing for me is I wanted to own my own recipes and I wanted to own my own formulas, because I wanted this to be proprietary to the brand so that I can scale it if that's what I wanted to do later so that I'm not going to other companies dependent upon another company for private labeling. Uh, Then the next step was really after to do that, um, get some really good people on the team um, to really execute my vision for the packaging and and the design work um, and what our brand story was, you know, just being true and authentic to the brand and just really putting that together because, you know, Premalicious is more than a dessert, it's an experience. And I'm just a normal person. So, you know, to, to really come to light, like, and bring something like that to the forefront, especially within the, in the community, just to say, you know, like, if you have a dream, there's a dream in every scoop. And if you have any type of dream, no matter what it is, you should go for your dream, you know, and you don't have to be scared because this fear that paralyzes us, it keeps us from really going for our dreams because so many people are afraid to fail or they're afraid that if they're told, they're told no, that it's just over. So, you know, those were the first steps and really just surrounding myself with people that were experts in the industry. I'm glad you brought that up, fear. I think that's a huge thing it's okay to have fear, but you just can't let it like control your life. Cause 
I don't feel cool. Like I've been doing this. Like I'm trained in journalism, but I do get nervous like on the interviews. But that's why I prepare. I sit here and I do my research and stuff. But I do have a fear. And so, but you have to get over that if you want to accomplish your dreams. So, you know, shout out to you for for still keep going and doing it because I know it can be hard. Um, what what um contract or what deal came first, like Kroger, Target, or Walmart? And how did that feel for you? It kind of like all kind of happened a little simultaneously for me. Um, it was Schnucks and Meyer um, that gave me the real shot, and then it was Walmart and and then Kroger and Target, and um, it was it was it really was um, kind of surreal because people were like, "Well, you need to get a broker," and then I couldn't get any broker to call me back or represent my brand, so I I just represented myself, uh, put together some decks, and then I personally called each one of the buyers. For some reason, I, I really got through. Um, it was a little hard because people wouldn't let me speak to the buyers, but I'm really good at sales. So once I got on the phone, I was able to really present uh, my story and my product and get in. I didn't go through the diversity departments because I didn't have a lot of luck with a lot of the diversity departments in the bigger uh, brands, uh, retailers, because you know there was just a lot of non-responsiveness um, people not calling you back or not taking you seriously and different things like that. Um, so once I made those calls and, and sent product out and got in there, you know, most of them didn't even, they hadn't even tasted the ice cream. Um, it was more for the, about the story for them and what it could mean to the category because our, our brand is very innovative. And what we found is consumers are looking for more indulgent and decadent desserts um, and because the category has just been the same, we have a lot of the same uh, bigger companies that really dominate the industry in the category. You you hit on a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, key points, one being that you can't just sit around and wait on somebody like you could everybody you could find a broker. So you went and was like, well, I'm going to do it myself. Again, that could have been fearful. It may have been, but you still went ahead and did it. And I think that's that's the lesson our listeners should take on because you're not always going to get presented with the opportunity. And sometimes it may be right there, but you still got to keep pushing and pushing and like make them notice you. You got to come your own marketing person. And with, even with us offering a marketing service, I tell people, you shouldn't, that should be your last step is hiring a marketing person. You should be out here knocking on these doors, hitting these emails, cold call, calling. And honestly, it's so uncomfortable. You sometimes feel like a fool, but you'd be like, and then you get that one deal and then you get that yes. And you're like, hmm. Not if gotta, I you gotta create your own you gotta create your own opportunities no one owe, owes you anything you have to understand um when I first started nobody wanted to give me any money nobody wanted to invest so I worked three jobs you know you have to invest in yourself before someone else will, will invest in you you can't go out and expect someone to put tons of money into your business off an, off an idea um, because you know we all have brilliant ideas. Um, I feel like we have these amazing ideas that that could be great things, but we have to understand operationally what it's going to take to bring something to market and what it's going to take to sustain a business. Because getting on the shelf is a little bit easier than actually staying on the shelf. Because a lot of times you can go into situations where I might, you know, not be able to be invited to the, you know, come to the table, be invited to the table. But I found that through relationships and making the right relationships, I can be invited through someone else so that I can be the table. So, you know, those are really big things because a lot of people say things like, I don't want to work for somebody else and different things like that. And you're not really a true entrepreneur because you have to understand in order to be a true entrepreneur at your core, you're going to humble yourself and do whatever it takes. If you got to go back to work a nine to five for your dream, then that's what you have to do, right? And you have to invest in yourself. Somebody give you $100,000 for your dream. It happens all the time. Like, hey, you know, I don't really need that much, you know, and then somebody's going to say, well, do you have a business plan? And you don't even have to take the time to write a business plan to see what you're going to need. And I've had a lot of failures, you know, but I, I've learned a lot of lessons, but that doesn't mean I have to live in my lessons. But a lot of times, if you don't have any skin in the game and somebody gives you money, you know, you can just decide, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. And then that person's just out of money. So you have to understand, you know, why people aren't so quick to invest in you if you're not willing to do whatever it takes to invest in yourself. And people have to like you. 
you know, they have to like you as a person, you know, sometimes your ideas might be like, oh, but if they like you, you know, you, you're, you're really 80% there because that's what investors look for. They look for, for just opportunities to invest in the person. If you aren't already, you definitely need to do some speaking engagements, some workshops. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I just like helping entrepreneurs. That's actually why I started this business. You know, I, I really, um, I just want to help other entrepreneurs, uh, you know, make their dreams come to re reality. You know, we're we're in such unprecedented times. We're in such places where tomorrow's not promised. We've seen it since COVID, you know, things are just like real, you know, you're talking to your friend the next day they're gone or you're with your parent and the next day they're diagnosed and they're gone and, and life, you know, just changes in a minute. But you have to, you know, decide that you want to live and not just merely exist. And I'm very clear about that, right? You know, we're we're always chasing these shiny things, these shiny objects. And, you know, it's the light that blinds us. And that light, you know, we're running towards light and you get up to it and you realize that it, it wasn't what it, it seemed to be. And, and it's okay to start over. And it's never about the destination. It's always about the journey, your path and, and what you're gonna learn on the way. You know, it's like you can be in a car and you pull over and pick somebody up, you know, put, put them in that car. And, and I'm, I speak in terms of your team. If people don't want to help you drive, they don't want to pump the gas, you know, and they just don't long for the ride. Then if, you know, if they took a back row seat to your failures, you can't give them a front row seat to your successes. And I'm very clear about that. So you just got to go for your dream. You just can't be afraid, you know, because you can fail a million times and that's okay. You get to do it all over again the next day. It's all good. I appreciate that because um, I was in, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm in Milwaukee now. I'm originally from here and I had moved to Georgia. Uh, and I was there for a year and I was just like I didn't move I moved because I'm tired of the cold and all this stuff and so I was down there and I was really struggling so I've been a full-time entrepreneur for I think it's going on four years and my rent was I mean it was extremely high and that had nothing to do with my other bills right so I was drowning and not telling anybody one telling my mom one telling my granny and I was just sitting there struggling and I'm like because I do not want to go home I don't want people to talk about me um and then, so I had to, like you said, put my ego aside because my overall goal was to make carbon and stone work. It wasn't to make it in Georgia. It's not to make it in Wisconsin. It's not to make it in Texas, but it's all overall to employ black and brown journalists through carbon and stone. So I had to put my ego aside and literally come back home and stay at home for a little bit. So I've been on my own for like three years or so. And I'm like, man, I'm about to be 27. There's no way I'm about to move back in. But me being here for a month now, I am able to pay off, like, I had, like, a $9,000 debt that I've been, like, working on, and I made, I'm almost paid it off in, like, a month, like, two, um, maybe, like, three months, and so by me putting my ego aside, now I'm able to, like, really stack money, and now our business is able to keep the money, and I'm able to look at our business and say, okay, wait, why are you doing that when that's not making us any money? Let's scale back instead of me trying to survive just to, to live, and so now I can live and ex more than exist but it took me to be like okay what is the overall goal what is your why it's your business in order to do that you got to step back and so that's like a lot of fear a lot of ego but now I'm like the happiest I got a grant like all the deals are coming in like we the within these three months we made just as much as we made within a whole year last year within three three months and so I was like imagine what we could do once we get this debt paid off and we really sit you know and so like, I appreciate you saying that because it took a lot of oh my God, I think everybody's going to talk about me, but it's like, you didn't do this for nobody. You did this for yourself. So you know what? Take take a step back. And it definitely has to be bigger than you. You you have a strategic plan for your business and you you have a vision. And then the next thing would be just to get, keep the right people around you that share in that same vision. You guys have a shared vision. You know, don't try to, you know, I think a lot of my mistakes earlier on, um, just employing a lot of people and, and just doing a lot of things that I did, you know, you want everybody around you to win. And some people just aren't ready. Everybody's not going to be there with you at the finish line. And, you know, some people are just, like I said, about that car, they're meant to ride, ride two or three miles with you. And then, you know, God's like, pull over, you know, and you just got to let them out, you know, and, and that's just how it is. And people need to understand, you know, people take things for granted. We're not going to always be 27 or in my case, 53, we're not, you're going to get older. 
at some point things are going to drastically change and slow down. You're going to be like, oh, you know, and we have more time in 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 back of us than than we do in front. You know, so we're we're moving forward through this life. And then what are you going to do? What are you going to be able to? What is your legacy going to be? You know, what what do you want to have happen in this part of your life in this time that you can say, you know what? And you can look back and say, you know, I lived a full life and I actually did it. That's what I'm trying to do, you know, every day. It's not the easiest thing to do, you know, and every day you're learning and you're changing and you have to repivot, but that's okay. Thank you. Man. Thank you. And it, and you are right about having a team because it took for my whole family. It took for my mentors. It took for like, like family I don't really talk to to be like, it's okay. Like, it literally took all of these people to be like, dude, if you don't do this, like this is what's meant for you. Just come back. But like you said, they all saw the vision. They all see like, but in order for you, you got to believe in yourself, first of all, but then like you said, you got to have a team. Um, speaking of teams, how do you go about building a solid team? Because I did, um, you know, during the pandemic early on, they were giving a lot of grants for like black owned businesses. So I was getting grants and I hired all these I spent a lot of money on employing people that really it was pointless basically. So how do you avoid that? And then how do you build how do you how do you know when to hire basically? That's, and then that's how do you amazing <laughs> that it's amazing that you asked that. I literally like even in the restaurant business, um, it is extremely hard um because of the mentality, um, because you don't really know like what people are. I'm I'm the type of person where, you know, I'm I'm all about show and prove, you know, and a lot of times you you have a need. You got to really understand what your need is. That's not that's not always easy. You know, like don't skip about, you know, going to your mentors and having a board, you know, an advisory board where they can help you understand exactly what you think your business might need based on your vision of where you're going. Like, you know, I, I try to do everything with you know, a job description and expectations. Like even when I kind of know a person, I know what they did just because they worked great and have degrees and all this experience for another company. That doesn't necessarily mean it's they're going to perform the same way in your company, especially if they're family or friends or something like that. And then if there's somebody off the street, you know, that's even even harder too, you know, because it it, it can be like a blessing and a curse because if your operations aren't where it needs to be, people can, not everybody, be very predatory because the moment they walk in your business and like, oh, she's laxed up. You know, like I'm I'm a super cool chef. Like I don't wear crocs, I wear heels, I'm I'm different. I'm just like authentic and I'm not what you would call like a strict corporate type of person because I'm very laxed up. You know, I'm inspired, I'm an artist. But sometimes people it's, you know, they can cross those lines and it's, it's kind of great. You know, I love being in the kitchen with my, with my chef team and, and really creating with them, but then they don't look at you as a boss. Sometimes people go over and be like, oh, you know, but we're not on the same level. You know, there's, there's respect here and people don't understand that this is a real job and it's your livelihood. And you have to really understand the people that you're bringing on your team. A lot of people like to speak about, um, what they've done in the past and how they've worked corporate and how they have a bunch of degrees and how they've done this, this, and that. And then they come over to your company and they can't bring that, just an inkling of that skill set here. What I'm trying to say is if, if you hire anyone or if you engage anyone in your business, you have to make sure that they're bringing value to your business, value to your life. If you are, if you have a friend that's your friend. The people that's in your life right now, if they're not bringing value to your life, you don't need them, you know, and that's a really big deal because, you know, trying to get a new business off the ground as a young entrepreneur, as a new business, um, it's very important that the those earlier stages, their first three years, we, we've been on a shelf for three years and it's, it's crazy because I can just say, oh my goodness, we've lost so much money. I've made so many errors. I should have did this. I shouldn't have hired this. I should have did this. But it's all about learning, right? So I feel like I'll be better for it. It's like, oh, I could have lost even more, but you, you're going to be better for it. You get what I'm trying to say? So how do you know you have a good team? You got to have people that really just want you to win. You know, you're going to know who those people are and they just really believe in you as a person and your vision so you got to kind of start there in my case with cream malicious I got people that was already in the ice cream industry 
with the bigger brands like Ben and Jerry's and haagen and Nestle. They're on my team and they've been doing this for like 25, 30 years. And I'm like, hey, can you be on my advisory board and help me out? I'm a smaller company, but ordinary people want to be extraordinary people and extraordinary people were once ordinary people. You know what I mean? So you got to you gotta really make sure you can make it happen. Yeah, and that's the key thing people miss out sometimes is that they think like the greatest people in the world at the end of the day, they all poop the same. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we're all the same. They just changed up their their everyday activities and how they thought of themselves and the world around them. Uh, I want to go to the ice cream, back to the ice cream. Can you, uh, I eat ice cream all the time, but what like are the basic steps or ingredients that go into ice cream? Like, how do you get it from like milk to... <laughs> <laughs> sugar is basic we all use the same stuff you know ice cream is ice cream it's like it's just a matter of the flavor you know we're all using the same ingredients for the most part it's all about the branding it's the branding that really takes you you know to a different place it's the story that's behind the brand and then some some every every one of these brands have a story you know, so it's, we, we all use the same thing. You know, we all have manufacturers. Some of us use the same manufacturers and, you know, our recipes and formulas are a little different. Like with Creamalicious, we're super premium pints. So we have like 14% butterfat, but then you have, you have um, premium pints that like have 12% butterfat. It's not as rich or decadent, you know, so it's, it's just different levels to it, but there's pretty much, you know, or either you're doing vegan or, you know, you're doing sorbets, which is, you know, fruit and fruit juices and no dairy, you know, there's, we all make the same stuff and it's, it's all the same process. Uh, actually, Augustus Jackson, he, he's African-American, um, eight, I think it was like 1830 or 1850, where he actually um, created the process of making ice cream. So he's, a, he's considered the father of ice cream and nobody knows that an African-American man actually pretty much created this and he created flavors like strawberry and uh, mint chocolate chip and he also did confectioners so you know those are some really historian kind of things so to to actually look up you know use salt so to keep the ice cream from melting so this is a really amazing thing that they're an african-american really helped to create this the process of making ice cream so you know i'm super proud of that myself I didn't know that. I've been shouting out the fact that a black man invented the ice cream scooper. Uh, like I didn't know that they, they invented ice cream too. Like yeah, the process of making ice cream. His name was Augustus Jackson. So you know, there's so many things that we've done that we don't get credit for. Like right now, Cream Malicious is the first and only um, African American ice cream manufacturer and first creamer company in the whole world. We have um, ice cream sandwiches coming out. Ooh, we have um, some other stuff coming out in September. And so we're super excited just about everything that this brand, It's we're a dessert company, so we're actually more than ice cream. Question. Um, so with, and it's just a random question, but I was just thinking about it. So Kroger, are you, are is your ice cream in Kroger affiliated places? So like in Milwaukee, we have Pick and Save, but they're, they're basically like the same thing or is it only specifically like Kroger? Like, would you have to do another deal with like a pick and save or another? No. So our ice cream is with affiliates at Kroger. I'm, I'm not really sure if it's in Milwaukee and pick and save. If you go to the Creamalicious, so Creamalicious.com, um, you'll be able to see, you know, the locator. But I, I do know we're in Ralph's and different things like that. So yes, we're in half of the Kroger stores. And that's another thing. We get so many we get so many um, letters and, and 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 emails about people are upset that we're not in some of the locations across the country in stores. I just need people to really start a movement and champion for Cream Malicious and and ask. It's it's not our decision, you know. Like there are some retailers that will not let us in their stores and areas. They just don't want us in the stores or competition. They don't respond when we're asking, but, you know, the consumer has all the power. So it would be really cool if people can get out there and start a movement. You know, I really believe that we're the next Ben and Jerry's. We could be, or or the next Nestle, and it's minority owned. And, you know, I really would love for people to get out there and support that. I really love um, a lot of the influential people to really come in and 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 really support this movement of cream malicious because it's really a big deal. It's history, you know, and we can help a lot of people through it. 
So if y'all listening, investors, because uh, I know some investors be li- listening to Carbon Stone Podcast, pre malicious, y'all, pre malicious. Um, few more questions. Uh, one being, so why why take the route of a chef? Like, how long have you been a a chef and because executive chef, correct? And so, um, why take that route? It's my passion, you know. My mom, she has, she, you know, she she's always wanted to own a restaurant. Um, and she passed away a year ago, but she had already always wanted to own a restaurant. And, you know, she was a single parent. There's four of us. I have three brothers. I'm the oldest. And it was crazy because she was a welder. So she took care of us, you know, by herself. And she never got to capture her dream. So I really feel like I, I wanted to be a chef and restaurateur because it was her dream and it became my dream. So, you know, so that she could live out her dream through me, you know, so those are some of the, the reasons. And and I just, I just love, love, love what I do. You know, it's, I get to do what I love, which is cook and create. And um, not a lot of people can say that they're doing what they, they get to do what they love. You know, That's I have brands that hate cooking. <laughs> they hate it, but you know, they love doing other stuff, you know, but I love, <laughs> I love it, you know, so it's great. I'm glad that you get to do what you love. I'm, I'm doing what I love. Get to hear your story, and I do love cooking. Um, I, it's, it's it's just so fun. I talked about it in the last podcast. So I'm gonna talk about it in this one, but I absolutely um love cooking. But I want to go right just real quick back. Your mom was a welder. She was a welder. It's crazy. She's the only woman that worked at her job. <laughs> it's like I didn't even understand that back then. I just didn't. But you know, she yeah, she was a welder. She was tough. Where um where where are you from? Cleveland. So she was a welder in Cleveland. What? How, um, when you were when you were growing up, uh, did you ever see her like weld anything? Like, were you ever like with her or like like? Or was it just like she, my mom was just went to work? Like, <laughs> never really saw her weld anything, but I saw like it was so cool to see like her in her uniform and you know uh have her you know her little shield sitting on the on the thing and you know I remember she used to have all this you know little pieces of steel you know on her um you know boots and stuff she'd have these road game boots and stuff and have this belt on it was it was interesting but yeah yeah she was she was a welder and, and uh but she was an amazing cook she made amazing sweet potato pies and she made amazing peach cobblers and that's how I pretty much got everything uh, from the pints, the inspiration from the pints. Yeah. Oh, uh, we didn't we didn't name any of the ice creams, but we got slap your mama banana pudding. We got porch light, peach cobbler, uh, and then you were a wing champ in Ohio. Yeah. So that's my restaurant here um, in Cincinnati, Wing Champ. So we have smoked and grilled wings, and we have some really good Southern food. Ooh, I love it. Um, how uh. What's next though? So you you did the you got the coffee creamers, you got the restaurant, you got the ice cream, the ice cream sandwiches. Um, is it overall? Do you just want to produce a lot of different types of food? Is it just sweets? Like um, or you kind of up for anything? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a chef, so I'm, and I'm a restaurant tour. Just you know, what's next is opening up a cream delicious dessertery in in Atlanta. Um, really expanding our. Um, our footprint in the dessert um, category, um, whether that be cobblers or pastries or ice creams or cookies or whatever it is, um, and just really uh, creating concepts um, for other restaurants and developers and just doing private label stuff. Like I, I'm really, um, I, I create things. So, you know, I'll get calls to create ice cream brands for other companies that want to go to market. So I do a lot of research and development and product development and consulting. So those are some of the things that I do and I love. And um, my biggest passion, to be perfectly honest, is to launch my visionary foundation to help other entrepreneurs capture their dream and help them with their businesses and really provide support regardless of what that is, but mainly support for them to have operations and and good teams around them, legal, accounting, and advisors to actually help build their businesses. So, and take it to the next level. So that's what I really want to do. That's amazing because I just um I just got out of a business program and Northwestern Mutual. They helped me from all sides, like from like you said, 
business insurance to make sure I have the processes, the right pitch decks. Um, they even helped me with my, we get a whole new website within the next uh, few months. So for your, would your program be, would it be like a program and accelerator? Like, like what is your, what, what, what do you want it to look like? No, I would love to have, um, I would love to have an accelerator program and then, and at some point really have um, some type of accredited, um, you know, course in, in a college of, I, I would really love to have that, you know, because I feel like I can really help other entrepreneurs, especially the ones that really grassroots and, and, and pull up from your bootstraps, because that's real. That's more real than thinking that we, we can just walk in the bank and get a loan or get a grant or get somebody to invest in us. This is the real, you know, so, you know, I, I want to, I would rather, you know, people understand what that part is and start from there. And then everything else is just going to be a bonus because I think I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs that apply for tons of grants. They apply for business loans, all these things, and none of that ever happens. And it literally discourages them. But I want to show them how to do it from just you and your hard work, because what I accomplished and what I achieved was really from me working really hard and anybody can do it. That's the thing, you know, I'm a real person that has like real stuff that happened in their lives that was able to achieve this. So it's like, it's just like, it's like a recipe. If you follow the recipe, you're bound that you you can win. Yes, follow the recipe, but you got to create your own recipe and it's okay if you ain't got all the ingredients right away. You know, that's why they got stores. You stop at them, get some stuff. <laughs> but how I end all my interviews, when people listen to this podcast, what do you want them to get from this? I just want, um, I just want people not to give up on their dreams that things are very, it's, it's not easy. It didn't happen overnight. You know, this was like 15 years in the making. Um, understand that it's you that's going to sell your brand. Um, it's you that a person's going to invest in and why a person's going to support your brand and just go for your dreams and, and never give up, you know, no matter how many times you fail, no matter how many times, you know, someone disappoints you, you know, never give up on your dreams and just go for it. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Go for your dreams. Cream Alicious, make sure you support the ice cream executive chef. Liz Rogers, um, please go out and support her. Again, any investors, or even if you're just a regular person who wants to donate, um, or even just share her stuff on social media, go ahead and do that. Uh, we need all the support in the world for our Black-owned businesses. Remember, you're listening to Carbon and Stone Podcast, where our positive news articles come to life. Um, the first season will be ending in May, so make sure y'all keep listening in, because we're slowly coming to an end for a few months. Um, also, if you're wondering how you can be a guest on the podcast, just DM us, DM us or uh, send us an email at cns at carbonstone.com or at carbonstone on all social medias. And remember, in the end, everything will be carved in stone.